Well, we're here now. <laughs> What's going on, you guys? Fico here, and welcome to my gaming mind, and welcome to the impressions video of Fallout 76. Today, I'm going to give you my points as to why I liked Fallout 76, things they could have done better, my hopes for the future, and at the end, you'll hear why I think this game should be a much better single player game rather than the online experience that we had today. Before I get started, I don't <laughs> think you guys need a little bit of a background. I have played Fallout 3, Fallout 4, I played a bunch of Bethesda's games and for a while I was a huge fan of Bethesda and then Fallout 76 kind of came and sort of just lifted the veil about who they were as developers. But I never gave Fallout 76 like a shot. So I didn't know whether the game was okay or not. I didn't know if it was fixed or not. I didn't know if it was better now than it was before. I had seen videos, trailers, impressions. People were complaining. And even today, <laughs> I even saw a video of their future plans for this game but I never actually played the game myself, so I didn't give much of an opinion, at least based upon what I was seeing, I did give opinions about that, but I never gave opinions about my own experience. Now, I played the game a couple of hours during their free weekend and had enough time to sort of kind of see what was good, what was bad, and here I am. And at the end of the video, I am going to make a few points to maybe even make this a separate video, but I'm going to talk first about the game. And then after that, I'll give a few opinions. And then my next video will be just about the overall result, Bethesda as a whole. <laughs> you can get that separate. So today we're gonna talk about the good things, the bad things. First is the good, the game was very, very stable for me. I found myself not having any crashes. I had fun during the activities. The activities, I mean, going through place to place, it felt like very smooth, 60 frames per second. It was fun. Maybe it was because I was doing this on stream and that gave me some company while I was doing this because I was playing by myself. I wasn't playing with anybody and I was playing this with the Wastelanders expansion added to it, which according to the description of this whole thing that added NPCs, it had a quest line that actually had you go to locations, interact with people. That stuff was really, really good. Characters I met, I had a lot of fun learning about them. Their voice acting was really well done. Very fun interactivity with this main story they added in here for Wastelanders. Going with the music. I love the Fallout music. I love the Fallout music in 3, New Vegas. Four. I felt like the tracks were getting repeated, but then they added like a whole bunch of new tracks in this game. And of course, Country Road, West Virginia played like two times. And of course, everybody in, <laughs> we were all like, Country Road, take me home. And we we're actually on the Country Road, <laughs> West Virginia, killing zombie. I forgot what they were called. Scorn, Scorched whatever. I don't remember what they were called, which brings me to the world. The world, I felt that it was very lush and detailed. I felt that the game didn't look all that graphically amazing compared to Fallout 4, but it did feel like I was in West Virginia. Whereas when you're in Boston, you've got a lot more buildings. You're surrounded by lots of city, lots of ocean. Here, you're just surrounded by wilderness, lots of trees and forests and swamps and dilapidated buildings. You felt like you were in the countryside. So this felt very nice and different. So props to the people who made the world of New Appalachia. That that felt very, very nice to traverse around. And of course you need your own things to do. So as you play, you level up. When you level up, you get what are known as 
perks, perk cards, and you sign them to your special. Now, uh, your special usually before you started out with a special ranking, then you get, uh, you level it up, and then that gives you like a bonus for certain things throughout the game. Perks were separate here. Uh, it looks like the perks are directly tied to your special. Really cool was that when you unlock a perk card and then you pick which one you want to put this perk card for, you can actually take a level one and boost it with another level one and then you get a level two. Like I had one that gave me more health on stim packs. That was really cool. Leaves a lot of room for experimentation for upping the level of your perks. So that was really cool. I actually really dug that. Now, that was very nice. I had a really immersive experience while I was playing this game. Special effects were nice. The last time I played, a nuke went off and that uh, sound of the sirens and then the nuke, you heard it, the explosion from, so, from very far away. I didn't uh, see it. I didn't feel the fallout. But you heard the explosion, the cloud, the mushroom cloud just lingering. And you heard it from afar. That was really cool. <laughs> Sound design was never an issue for these games. And music was never an issue with these games. And honestly, when it comes to the technicality of some of the things that are like, like stuff like voice, sound, those things were never problems. So the sound effects, the guns felt punchy, echoes really far away when you're shooting. It's very, very well made. Now, obviously, oh, 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 oh here we go. <laughs> Forgot to do this. Good. I didn't have any issues with slowdowns. Performance overall seems to have been very, very well around the 60 frames per second. Sometimes it slowed down a little bit. And overall, I can't tell you I had many, many problems. I can't even tell you that I had even slightly much problems. I had like one issue while I was on stream and one issue this morning when I played before I uninstalled it, which was the game crashed on me once. But other than that, in a four, maybe five hour stream, four hour stream, we experienced the game together and I had no problems with it on a technical level. It didn't slow down when I was a streaming. Some games run better than Fallout 76 and it chugs my performance. It didn't do it here while I was streaming. So I'm impressed. Fallout 76, if it was having these issues before I played this game two years ago, now they're not here. If I hadn't seen any of the other videos, <laughs> actually legit seeing the problems, I wouldn't have believed that this game had any issues. So props to the development team that were fixing this game. So props. <laughs> I talked a lot of nonsense about you guys and I'm going to start <laughs> in a moment again, but I got to give you props where props are due. The game ran really, really well. So good job. Now for the bad things. The bugs are still there. Uh, the bug that I encountered was that I was shooting a dog. No matter what I did, it would not take any health. I thought I was missing when I was shooting him. So I packed a machete and I slashed and I slashed and I slashed and that dog was not dying. That dog was not losing any health. He was a level one mob, level one. I've killed things slashing with my machete with a level one. The dog should have died at least a few slashes in, maybe. No, dog just kept on coming, so killed me. So I had to go over there all the way back to pick up my loot. I don't know what happened. I can say what happened. I was told that was an issue that was happening with invulnerability with some animals. It looks like um, that's a known <laughs> problem. Uh, it seems very elementary for an, a problem like this to happen, but there you go. There's a problem like that, which kind of doesn't surprise me when this game was just chock filled with these problems, but I didn't experience them. So I won't talk about them as part of what happened in this review. So I'm going to talk about the things that I did see that I didn't like, 
in the four to five hours that I played, I didn't notice a lot of enemy variety. The trailer showed a whole bunch of enemies that are to West Virginia. Things that you would, oh my God, it's like these are things that in the experience that you would have, these are like things that look like different creatures and all of that. But during the time I was playing, I only met Protectrons, the Scorched, and those little itty bitty robots that had a little red star on them and maybe the iBots and that's it. Enemies that I've already seen before, you could expect them obviously because this isn't the world of Fallout, but I was kind of hoping to get new enemies. I did get a tick. Big, big ticks. <laughs> but other than that, there isn't like a lot of enemy variety in the early game at least. Maybe later you'll get more variety, but I, I didn't I didn't see too much. Which brings me to the gameplay, which is another thing that I didn't quite like. Now the game managed to flow very well. However, the game doesn't feel all that different from the previous Fallout games. It didn't feel all that much different. This is a game that's supposed to be an online experience. It felt like they took Fallout 4 and they put it in an online environment. That's what I kept hearing and that's what I noticed. The gameplay very much well is very basically Fallout 4 in West Virginia. If you like Fallout 4, you're not going to complain one bit whatsoever, but at the same time, you're not getting much anything different. And if you got this game when it first came out, you had no interactivity with any NPCs whatsoever. So it felt like it was like Fallout 4, but they took out all the NPCs and the main story and all of that. Gameplay felt very familiar, wasn't too different at all. I didn't notice much differences aside from like the leveling up and the perks and all that. But gameplay wise, it did not feel like it was a who huge of an evolution it felt like i was playing fallout 4 again in west virginia i liked fallout 4 i didn't think it was the best fallout game i thought it was a fun game but this game is supposed to be on an endless loop and it's a it's supposed to be a life service game where you're always going to have to go back in there and get constant stuff they say that's what's going to happen but unfortunately when i played it i didn't find myself all that interested because you're just once you're done with Wastelanders, I wonder if there's more to do, but I know what's coming. It's just hollow tapes go here, hollow tapes go there. Didn't have enough time to actually experience that. I wish they would have done more to improve upon it. I didn't test VATS. I know VATS is an aimbot, but the game never even told me I had VATS. I knew I had VATS, but I just didn't really bother to even test it. I was fine just shooting them. <laughs> a little annoying that the pit boy does not stop the action. There's no pause. I mean, I, I get it. I mean, games like life service games don't do that as well. Kind of found that a little bit annoying. That's kind of like a small gripe. Crafting doesn't seem all that important and camping doesn't seem all that necessary. They give you this camp that you can take with you. When I played Fallout 4, the camp stuff, like the places where you can just improve your stuff, I didn't find it all that interesting. I didn't find it necessary. I didn't think it was that important. It was just a diversion to keep you playing this game longer, which honestly, I didn't really <laughs> find myself too much invested in this game. So I didn't care about the crafting when it was in 4, I didn't care too much about it here. As I said, <laughs> if I wish they would have done much more differently. The online component of this game, to me, didn't feel like it was there. That's another bad thing. I'll get more into detail on the second video. I did see other players, but they didn't do anything to me. I didn't do anything to them. They didn't say hi, I didn't say hi back to them. It felt like I was just on my own. They were there. They're all around the world, not many. They were doing stuff, but you can't interact with them. They don't help you. You don't help them. I mean, it just doesn't, the game doesn't do enough to get you to interact with these people. And when you're starting the game out, you're not encouraged to look for other people to help you either. Go do these missions, go do this, go do that. 
So it felt like you were playing a single player Fallout game, but in reality, they didn't design this game so that you would be the only person discovering Appalachia. They wanted you to interact with other people. They realized that didn't work, so they added NPCs. So now they added NPCs, they added, they fixed that problem, which means that now you have people who you are interacting with that are important for you to move on, but you got all these other people who are a part of the game who are playing just like you, who all left Vault 76, and it doesn't really matter. So the online component doesn't add much of anything, <laughs> to me at least. If you're playing with friends, then perfect. There you go. <laughs> that is how you can actually have, I can actually imagine having lots of fun with this game, with other people, nuking things. <laughs> I mean, that actually would be very, very nice. But honestly, this game could have done without the component. That's why I think this game would have been better as a single player game. This probably could have been one of the best Fallout single player games they have made. The world was lush, had lots of interesting things. They could have had some important, really great storyline. But now, because that's not how the game was built, you have to wait until they start adding this stuff into the game, and then you can then start interacting with them. That's how they'll keep you in this game. That's a live service. It's not there now, it will be there later. And I don't like that. I don't like having to wait for the developers to give me more game. I wish that they would have done like they did in Fallout 3, like they did in Fallout 4, like how Obsidian did with New Vegas. I would have wished that they had more. But that being said, the game did run really well. <laughs> for me, at least, it ran really well. And I was very surprised I had this much fun. So, personally, I recommend this game for anyone who is a hardcore Fallout fan. I don't recommend this game at full price. I don't recommend this game at $40. Wait till it goes halfway down. Wait until they release the Heaven Sword version <laughs> of Fallout 76. Wait till it goes down to 20. Heck, wait till it goes down to zero. Goes a free to play one day maybe and there you could enjoy with your friends and then they could justify all the stuff that's uh, in the Atomic Shop and Fallout 4 first and all of that other stuff. Uh, but anyway, I'm not recommending this game overall because I don't think that this game does enough to get you. I personally wouldn't buy this game. It was fun. I enjoyed playing it. I would enjoy playing this game if it was for free uh, because they're offering a bunch of stuff you buy in the game. Personally, I wouldn't mind purchasing those things like Destiny 2. Like they went free. Buy Shadowkeep if you want. Do activities if you want. For now, how the game is right now. With Wastelanders, big improvement. Would recommend if it was like on super duper sale to get it like 80% off. Get it. Very fun game overall. Not in its current price and not with any of the other stuff that is added. I would just, you either give me a full Fallout game, ex single player experience, take away the Atomic Shop, forget about the subscription, forget about the season pass, give me that. I much prefer a game like that. But if you're not going to do that, just leave all those things in, but just make it for free. That would be what I would recommend. This game is looking better. I don't think this game, in my eyes, I didn't see the mitigated catastrophe. I was expecting to just no take down. I actually expected like a bug counter, <laughs> but that didn't happen. So sh uh, shout outs to y'all for doing that. Um, I'm gonna make another video to express other things about this game and Bethesda overall. But for now, that was my overall impressions of Fallout 76, how it is now after the Wastelanders update. We're in mid-May. Whatever happens from now to the next phase of their plan and their roadmap on fall and winter, all of that is not accountable here. All I'm counting is what I played as of this past weekend in mid-May. Thank you everybody so much for watching this video. If you guys like this video, if you wanna see different things in these review videos or you wanna see any other reviews, let me know. I've got Xbox Game Pass Ultimates, a couple of games that I want to play there. 
I've got a couple of humble games that I want to play. Kind of give you all my impressions. Kind of want to get back on doing YouTube. Seriously. It's been a while. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like, share, subscribe. Put that bell notification on. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. And most definitely follow me on Twitch where I stream five days a week. And I stream Friday nights. A new humble monthly game, a new humble choice game every Friday. And I do art on Saturdays and I play games on Saturdays as well too. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate all of the support y'all have been giving me. You guys have an amazing and safe week. Take it easy guys. My name is Vico and that was my gaming mind. Country Roads took me home to the place I belonged, yes, ladies and gentlemen, West Virginia, Mountain Mama, take me home, country road.